Now, when I was 13 years old, my grandfather told me, success is to earn more than your father. <laughs> so at the age of 13, I already had it clear what success means in life. And when you're 13 years old and a gray-haired man turns and says this in a wise-sounding way, you just take it. So I really just take it that success had to do with earning more money than my father. At the age of 21, I figured out how much my father earned. So the question was, is the inflation figure real or nominal in comparison? <laughs> but uh, I didn't ever think about being an entrepreneur. In reality, I moved to Barcelona because I met a girl. I moved to here because I met a girl. There was no grand scheme of, I'm going to choose a place to live. I met a cute girl working in Chicago, and she was from Barcelona. And when I was here living in Barcelona, I, I did an MBA. And at the end of the MBA, I, I thought, Barcelona. I could go back to work in consulting, Accenture. They'll hire me. I could take a job with a local company. I could take a job with a multinational that's based here. I had interviews with Sony, with HP. But at the end, I thought, no matter what company I join here, five, ten years, a couple of promotions, I'm going to go to Switzerland, or I'm going to go to London, or I'm going to go to Japan. The only way I can live in Barcelona and control where I live is if I am an entrepreneur. Although I, I now like Johan's definition, if I am the boss. <laughs> so I never thought of being an entrepreneur, but I, I think I did think about being a boss often as a kid. It did say I have three, I have a sister and two brothers. I'm the oldest, but I never got to be in charge. So maybe entrepreneurship is, is trying to undo that unfairness that uh, my parents never let me sit in the front of the car without having to share it with my sisters and brothers. Whereas being an entrepreneur is my way of being in charge. But around about 30, I changed my idea of what success is. Around about 30, my idea of success, 30 million euros in the bank, age 42. And I was on my third business, uh, and I thought, you know, this is okay, I need to build four businesses. Each one is about a ten time multiple of the previous one. With my fourth business, it needs to be a hundred million IPO where I own about 30% of it. And I was on pretty good track for this. I had a, an aviation company, I sell private jets. And we built the third biggest fleet of private jets in Spain. We were, uh, there was people trying to buy us, about every two months I would receive an offer. I used to drive around Barcelona looking at big houses thinking, I could have that. <laughs> Porsche Cayenne is, I could have that, but I don't want it. <laughs> and I lived from pretty much 30 to 35 watching as my company grew. I sold airplanes 2006, 2007. I sold an airplane every six weeks. And watching someone sign a check for four, five, six million and hand it over to me, and I have to pretend that I know what I'm doing when I take this check. Usually, I, the first ever time someone signed a check for three million euros and passed it over to me, and I nodded as if I knew exactly what the process is, and I walked out of the room. <laughs> what do you do if you lose something like this? <laughs> but. It was a highlight of, of those times, but uh, 2008, Lehman collapsed. Uh, about a month after Lehman collapsed, the financing for almost every aircraft we owned suddenly completely changed. Uh, September 2009, we saw that revenues dropped from about a quarter of a million a month to 20,000 a month. By December, they were down at zero. There was no one flying private jet. I had about 45 employees directly and indirectly employed. We had 1.3 million cash in the bank. And I watched as it just went down by 200,000 month after month after month. And so at the age of 35, I found myself hitting the point where I had to let everyone go from the company because I was then going to enter the criminal period where you cannot pay the social security of your employees. And uh, I would drive around Barcelona, I'd look at those big houses that I could have owned, 
and I would think to myself, if only I'd taken the offer that I was given, if only I'd made a different decision, if only I'd laid those employees off nine months before when I knew, why, why wasn't I strong enough to take the decisions I knew I needed to make? And I found myself divorced. And the divorce came as a, it was a price of when you're giving everything to try and save a sinking ship you're not giving to the other aspects of your life. And I think a good life is not just one pillar, it's five or ten pillars. And when you stop feeding one of those pillars, it starts withering away and it's not there. So, 35 years old, I found that I was going bankrupt, I was alone, I was thinking day after day, what happened, why have I done this, what did I do to deserve being here? And it, it was a year of very much feeling sorry for myself and asking questions that they're not very good questions. What have I done to deserve this? There's no answer, and even if there was an answer, it's about something in the past. That was, so probably for me, the, the learning that is most painfully earned and most important to me is the three most important things in life, faith, hope, and love. Faith. Everything has happened for a reason. I may understand it or may not, but all that matters is that I accept that I'm right here. Any emotional baggage you carry into this room, any blame you hold from the past, any feeling that you should have done something different in the past is a burden. And as long as you carry it, it's stopping you being able to be here now. So I figured out a way of stopping blaming my dad for some of the things that I feel he didn't do when I was a kid. He never showed up to watch me score a goal at football. All my other friends, their dads were on the touchline as they scored. My dad, not. And I carried that as a little bit of a baggage for most of my life until about 35. Hope. You can change the future with action now. You can always change the future, but it's action now. Thinking about action tomorrow is not action now. Only action now is action now. When David asked you to write three things down and you sit there and you go, I know what he means, that's not action. Only writing it down begins the change. And tomorrow when you look at that action, only doing it begins it. The only action changes the future. Thinking about action changes nothing. And the third, love. Love is that every question you ask yourself, the subject of that question cannot be yourself. What's my purpose? There's never an answer. What does my daughter need from me now? There's always an answer. What does my mother need from me now? There's always an answer. What does my girlfriend need from me now? I can always come up with an answer. Sometimes it's, it's big and profound, but most of the time it's quite simple. Call her, a letter, a phone call. Travel there for Christmas. Faith, hope, and love. Faith. Everything that's happened has happened for some reason. You may or may not ever understand it, but you're here now. Hope, action now changes the future. No matter where you are, no matter how you feel, action now changes it. And love, stop asking any question that has you at the center. And that begins where customer service becomes more important. The more you serve, the more you get. The more you give, the more you get. And I think what I... I've got in listening to the four stories that David, Johan, Jose Manuel, and Andre have shared with us, is being an entrepreneur forces you to give, because you have nothing. At the beginning, all you can do is ask, because an entrepreneur to me is someone who has bigger ideas than the resources they have available. So if your ideas are bigger than your resources, the only way of getting somewhere is by asking other people for help. And I think entrepreneurship clarifies and cuts through in a way that few other things do because you're forced to go and ask and speak to your friends and speak to your family and ask them for help in a real way and I think all the lessons that I've learned in entrepreneurship have brought me from an arrogant consultant aged 26 27 who thought the world owed me a living to a somewhat humble entrepreneur that realizes every day I wake up and I better give the world something because I'm owed nothing in return. So what I would like is your questions to figure out how you can start taking action, how you can start 
giving your service to the world? Because I think entrepreneurship is a euphemism. It's a nice word and it's bandied around. But you've got to pick a problem in the world that you want to be part of fixing. And if you fix a problem that's painful for people, you will be well paid for the process.